Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another chapter of Thoughts on Education. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Surendra Rathod with us. He is the professor in Electronic Engineering Department at Sardar Patel Institute of Technology. As you know, uh, Sardar Patel Institute of Technology is one of the greatest college in Maharashtra. Today, we have invited the uh, you know the honorable professor uh, Dr. Surendra Rathod on our platform to share his thoughts on education scenario in India. And also the uh, the thoughts on education currently in SPIT. Uh, with this note, I welcome you on our platform, sir. Thank you so much for joining in. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Right, sir. Uh, sir, with this note, I will start with my first question. So, sir, I would like to understand. You have held key position at education institutes throughout your professional career. So, what keeps you connected with the education sector, and how has your experience been so far? Okay, thank you very much for this question. Hello to all those who are watching this video. I am Dr. Surinder Atwood from Bharti Vidya Bhavan's Sardar Patel Institute of Technology. Thank you for this opportunity. It's a wonderful to be in this conversation. I joined SPIT College as a lecturer, and subsequently I did my PhD from IIT Roorkee. I was head of Electronics Engineering Department for more than eight years. and dean academics at the institute for more than 2 years i have been in education for nearly 24 years as of now i must admit i am enjoying it people say that you never get tired my simple answer to this is you never get tired if you enjoy what you are doing i am passionate about it and i therefore enjoy it i am a teacher by choice and not by default or by chance teaching to my mind is not a job but it is a process of nation building it is one of the satisfying profession it helps you to build the career of thousands of young people through this future of country is decided and i feel very fortunate that i am contributing in the nation building education is the fundamental aspect of our life it prepares all of us to face the life at the initial stages of our life our parents teach us they are our educators they tell us how to walk they tell us how to talk at the later stages in our life we require the mentors to guide us hence education is must for everyone for me it is a big joy to be a part of an education sector and it is a kind of lifetime opportunity to contribute to make a difference in life of the people there are many student centric initiatives which i was able to initiate at spit and when the alumni come back and they recollect their memories of those days they tell me about those initiatives they tell me about how they were helped by those initiatives how they have made their career it feels very satisfying and i feel i got a chance to empower the youth i'm thankful to god for giving me this opportunity to remain in education sector and i want to be in this education sector that's that's really great sir that was really inspiring uh sir uh, my next question to you is being the professor at spit what do you think your roles and responsibility are towards the students oh my roles and responsibilities towards uh, students in general i would say towards this uh, profession itself uh, first of all i would like to make it very clear that uh, all statutory bodies or regulatory bodies they clearly define the roles and responsibilities of a teacher and of a student also but do everyone fulfill those responsibilities would be a question i must say that i try my level best to fulfill all those responsibilities with full dedication i believe that my job as a professor is not only to teach or it is not only to do a research which is no doubt a prime responsibility as a professor to teach and to do a research but i also believe that uh, one of the prime responsibility is to lead by an example i lead by an example whatever i say i believe in that so walk the talk is my personality trait personally i uh, don't teach that i don't practice or i cannot do in my life 
I do every effort to work at the ground level. I practice this philosophy on day to day basis. I believe that my role is more inspirational uh, in the education system. I should be an inspiration to my students, to my colleagues. I do myself what I want others to do. For example, just to put an example, punctuality is my personality trait. I have never been late for a class or for a meeting that any student of SPIT would tell to whom I taught. In fact, a good teacher is driven always by the values and should believe in the service-minded ways. We should treat our students as our customers and provide the service to their satisfaction. Without students, no college can exist. And hence, service to them should be the prime importance in our life. And that would be the most important role that I should fulfill. All it is the most important responsibility of myself. Yeah. I also strongly believe in a feedback-driven system. In engineering, we teach a course called as control systems. In that, what we teach is how important it is to have a feedback to make a system reliable, to make a system stable, and also to make a system error-free. So one should always take the student feedbacks very, very seriously and bring those interventions in the academics based on those feedbacks. I should say that professors should always dream about the future of the students and future of the students can be seen in their feedbacks. One more thing, or I would say my responsibility would be to align the people towards the common vision. And it is the most important. I think as an important stakeholder in this system, it is my responsibility to make every stakeholder, including students and faculty, aware about the vision and mission of the institute, to be aware about the vision and mission of the department. Alignment of students and teachers and their vision and the institute's vision, department vision should be the priority. I must admit that openness is required to accept new ideas, new proposals to realize the vision. It is very important to accept the young minds ideas. Young people come with very, very new ideas and we must admit them. We must realize our vision and mission based on those ideas. One should be open for all those ideas. And at SPIT, all students are allowed to experiment their ideas. All teachers are allowed to experiment with their new pedagogy techniques. I was Dean and Head of Electronics Engineering Department. I learned that when you are a Dean or Head of the Department, it is not about the power. In fact, it is about making others empowered. In fact, professor's life is full of drama. It is not like a film where we are having a lot of retakes. Whatever we do, we are being watched by our students. We are being watched by their parents. We are being watched by the entire society. Whatever we do changes in the academics. It directly affects our students. And hence, I would say we need to be very, very ultra careful when we are fulfilling our responsibilities. I must proudly say that my biggest contribution or the responsibility that I fulfilled towards SPIT is setting the innovative curriculum, setting the accreditation mechanisms and the quality processes when it was required the most. That is when the, at the national level, when OB, that is outcome-based education was introduced, I was instrumental in setting these processes at SPIT. No doubt over a period of time when the people change, those processes do change. But I'm still proud of those academic interventions that I did. After so many years of my experience in academics, I must also say that youth of this country wants to do something. Students want to learn a lot of things. But the defaulters are the professors, those who are running the colleges commercially. It's okay. It's okay if you want money, but you cannot cheat the students. The main thing is to give the students the attention and make them do their best. So I feel my responsibility towards students I have fulfilled as of now and want to continue to do so. That's that's really great, sir. Uh, sir, since in your answers we got a gist about you know how the curriculum at SPIT looks like, one thing that I would like to ask you, 
uh do you have any extracurricular activities uh, to enhance the skills of your students in spit oh there are so many i can go on discussing them because uh, there are so many which i have introduced uh, we have a vibrant student council which organizes all such extracurricular related events these events are completely driven by the students there are so many forums in the institute just to recollect some of them are we have an ir cell which is an industry relations cell so industry institute interaction is being handled by the students themselves we have an e cell which is called as an entrepreneurship cell we have an iic cell no doubt is a mandatory by mhrd but uh, students are managing that cell it is called as an institute innovation council we have a spark committee we have an iite committee we have a english literary association we have a road tracks club we have ieee committee we have women in engineering ieee committee at the spit we have a coding forum called as a coding club uh, wherein students learn lot of coding skills they participate in hackathons and all those activities they do we have a uh, csi student chapter in the institute we have one more very important chapter which we started at mumbai it is the only college which is having that chapter at mumbai in fact this part of the region of the country i would say and that is called as a fsai student chapter which is the fire and security association of india it's uh, one of the uh, ngo with the mission of having secured bharat and uh, in fact i am one of the student uh, uh, what would i would say chairman of the committees at this uh, forum and uh, this is a very vibrant chapter through which we conduct a lot of activities there are many department level student bodies or student forums like telecommunication department has its uh, committee called as fets computer department has its committee called as fes uh, other departments like it department has a committee called as itsa my own department which is electronics department has a committee called as an isa electronic student association so there are so many uh, committees and therefore every committee is always active in uh, doing extra curricular activities nowadays exactly. engineers require many other skills to become successful in life exactly. and those can be achieved only through extra curricular activities right exactly. so sir uh, how do you uh, you know how do you bring in practical approaches towards the subjects or you know during the curriculum to make uh, to train or teach these students so uh, as far as curriculum is concerned uh, we have a very formal mechanism of uh, designing the curriculum and bringing these practical aspects into the curriculum uh, we invite outstanding people on board uh, for evolving the curriculum uh, particularly professors from iit bombay uh, we are committed to provide the quality education resulting in graduates who are not only focused on one skill but they are thoughtful enough they are multidisciplinary they are multi perspective they are having the holistic due towards the life our model curriculum is completely liberal it's a unique cafeteria based model pi model of curriculum we are following there are a lot of lot of choices of the courses that are being given to the students complete depth and breadth across all the branches specializations have been followed at spit we have first two semesters which are common across the branches then third fourth and fifth semester is domain wise common across the branches that is for example computer domain has their own stream all all collective courses electronics has their collective courses and specialization starts from the 6th semester so 6th 7th and 8th semester we believe in the holistic development and hence learning by doing is a by default approach that we follow in the curriculum uh, i would uh, say one thing to you that is the tagline of our curriculum and tagline of our curriculum is making a difference in life so making a difference in life of a student making a difference in life of any stakeholder of spit we have designed a curriculum which is a joyful to the students we have minor certifications honor certifications scope certifications there are many other uh, courses other than basic sciences engineering sciences professional course professional electives which are there in almost all engineering colleges we have a bunch of open electives students from electronics or telecommunication engineering can join the courses from computer domain they can learn those ai ml and all those kind of courses or vice versa can happen somebody from computer wants to come back and learns robotics or mechatronics related courses robotic vision kind of courses consumer electronics courses they are all possible 
MOOC courses are part of our syllabus, uh, massive online courses. We allow our students to uh, join the NPTEL courses, SWAM courses offered by IITs, and we do great new credits for them. Uh, there are semester long internships in our curriculum. Entire six semester, uh, one semester, we leave the students to join the industry. They join an industry and uh, they get a practical exposure through those courses. There are many courses like liberal art courses, uh, yoga, dramatics, music, athletics, design thinking, which is probably an innovative course which we have added to our curriculum right. to give the pr practical aspects to our students, right? Fire safety and security, you will not find in uh, general engineering courses. I would say one more course, that is a legal studies, law for engineers. You will not find law for engineers course uh, generally, but that is a very important course for an engineer. They should know the legal practices, legal implications of their products, right? Other courses like foreign language, etc. They are all there, no doubt. One more course, I would say financial management, investment, taxation. Taxation is very important for us, right? When we pass out, uh, when the students go out of the college life and they join any uh, profession, uh, they need to calculate the taxes, they need to plan their life. So we make sure that every student graduating from SPIT has a PAN card and he or she has filled up at least one uh, taxation form, income tax returns form, maybe for parents or someone. So uh, these are all the things we uh, bring to our uh, syllabus. And industry, industry uh, related things are, there are so many industry institute opportunities and the industry uh, joint ventures that we carry out in our syllabus. Exactly. So all of those are there. Exactly. So sir, uh, what do we, uh, we have, you know, we have talked about various trends about uh, SPIT, the best curriculum that they have, or, you know, how do they bring the practical approaches? What I would like to understand now is, what are the biggest challenges that you think uh, that there are for higher education in general and for SPIT in particular. Okay. So if you are asking challenges in general, then there are too many challenges. <laughs> let, let me focus on few of them. Uh, I think education sector requires a lot of attention, not only from the central government, but also particularly in this pandemic from state government. I am fully aware that central government has come up with a very encouraging national policy on education. It's a very good policy and, and uh, I believe in that policy. But the fantastic suggestions given by the national policy of education should be implemented on ground. And that too it predefined timeline. So just to give an example, there is a multiplicity of regulating authorities. As of now, they are all present in the country. So SPIT being an autonomous institution, so autonomous status has been granted by UGC to us. Affiliation has been given by the Mumbai University. Approval being an engineering college is given by the AICT. So we need to follow all of these regulating bodies. NEP promises to remove the multiplicity of these regulating bodies. Now we are still awaiting uh, these kind of things to happen. So I see that there are many suggestions which are given in NAP, which uh, probably requires immediate attention by both the state as well as the central governments. Another challenge as far as higher education in the country is concerned, it is about the uh, quantitative expansion, uh, but quality, I am sorry to say, is not to that extent good. Uh, best of the people should join the teaching if you want to flourish the education institutions who are giving the quality education. Nowadays, I have seen that teachers who don't want to learn, but they want to join the teaching. That means there are people who uh, do minimum and want to get the maximum. So this kind of principle or this kind of characteristics is not a good characteristic for an educationist. Also, the slow pace of changes in the academics due to non-motivated teachers or passive teachers, I would say, taking the leading positions, particularly in education institutions, is a big challenge. Institutions should get full freedom for appointment of the faculty and for giving the pay packages to the faculty. We are governed by the regulating bodies for appointment of the faculties. For, in fact, for charging the fees, we are governed by the fee regulating bodies. And hence, it is a challenge to get the good faculty because you need to pay to them. Uh, to, uh, it is a challenge to create a good infrastructure if we are being 
uh, regulated by the fee regulating authorities. As far as SPIT is concerned, uh, I also foresee one of the challenge that is the faculty appointment because recently we have introduced new courses uh, like CSC AI ML, CSC Data Science, and those are industry relevant courses. That means you need a faculty who, uh, who is uh, well versed in these recent courses. And to get such faculties is a challenge because AI cities has opened up and given these branches to almost all the colleges. Whoever is asking, they are giving AI, ML and data science. So definitely there will be a crunch of good faculty, but I'm sure SPIT management might have thought of about it uh, when while they have introduced such courses uh, from where and how to train the faculty and bring the faculty. Right. One more concern, and that is an immediate concern and the challenge I would say is resuming the institution after COVID-19. Immediate plan would be getting ready or should get ready to bring back the situation to the normal life. Resuming the campus life is very, very important. It is a challenging situation. COVID taught us how important it is to have a physical interaction, right? COVID has shown us both sides of the coin. It has shown us how important it is to embrace the technology and adapt online learning. While doing so, it has also taught us how important it is to remain in physical contact, that is to have an offline learning. What mostly suffered during COVID period are our laboratory courses. You know, engineering is nothing but experimentation. Yeah, right, sir. It is about the laboratory and Corona has snatched away these laboratory courses from us. And that's the most uh, thing, how to bring back that lab life uh, in the life of newly admitted students. Right, so that that is the most uh, important challenge I would say in the present scenario. Right, sir. Uh, sir, this has been a really informative session till now. Uh, this is going to be my last question uh, for this interview. Uh, sir, I would like to understand: uh, Are there any suggestions that you would like to give to the current youth and the aspiring students? <laughs> okay, current generation. Uh, this generation do not like suggestions. I know. And uh, they want to do whatever they wish. But uh, we are a teacher. Uh, as a teacher, this is my job. And uh, it does help us, suggestion does help students in uh, many critical situations. And you ask this question. So from my side, I would like to bring uh, three, four suggestions for them. And the most important one I would like to tell. The first suggestion I would like to give to the students is to be a lifelong learner. That means acquire the ability to learn, unlearn, and then relearn. In fact, COVID-19 has taught this to everyone very well. The people who were reluctant to go online for an education or for, for the meeting, now they are continuously connected in online. And in fact, many of them are doing work from home. So that means acquire the first ability uh, to learn. World has seen many crises from the world war, these natural calamities, recession to this pandemic. Do not worry about this COVID-19 situation. In fact, you are the one who will be driving the next change. Hopefully, you will take decisions to make the world a better place. COVID war is going to be won by the people who are adaptable, who are flexible to change, who are lifelong learners. In fact, I would say never waste the time behind discussing the COVID, right? You should consider this as an opportunity and catch this opportunity. This online mechanism has opened new doors for you. Now you can learn anywhere from anybody at any time. So make the best benefit of this situation and be a lifelong learner. Second suggestion I would like to give to this generation is to be an all-rounder. That's what this world needs to be. Gone are the days when you are extra specialist. You are supposed to do a lot more than what is within your purview. There are many expectations from us nowadays. So that means you need to be an all-rounder to fulfill all those expectations. In cricket, you know, if specialist fails, for example, if opener fails, the hope is towards the all-rounder, right? If all-rounder fails with the bat, people still have a hope that all-rounder is going to do well with the ball. That means always you should aspire to be an all-rounder and that is what is required by this world. And the third suggestion I would like to give is do a proper planning of your life. 
if you do not plan for yourself then someone else is going to plan for you maybe your father mother some parent or maybe your friend in fact let me tell you that it is a fact of life that your parents or in fact professors do not plan your life your friends generally plan your life they decide your future and due to peer pressure and all kinds of disruptions that are present in today's life young students are not even able to decide their priorities in life that means they are not able to plan their life hence they remain confused and tend to keep their feet in too many boats at the same time many a times we find that they are completely misfit for the profession which they have chosen so remember now education has become completely multidisciplinary even if you do not get a branch of your choice like you want to do a computer ai ml or data science do not worry about it right whatever branch you get love to learn in that branch do not just join the bandwagon of joining a particular branch all branches are vital in our life all shall remain vital we require the dams and the bridges we require the computer programs we also require the instruments for monitoring our health everything is important all branches are engineering are very very important in whatever branch you get you love that branch do what you love and whatever you are doing you will be successfully you will definitely be successful you are going to get multiple opportunities if you plan your life very well and execute it very well okay that's, so that's my three really suggestions helpful. i have given i have given three important suggestions i think that's and really uh, great advice, you know, sir. yeah that is the thing uh, sir with this note i would like to conclude this interview this has been an informative session you have talked about various things the one advice that i really like was the thing that where you mention that it is the uh, it is your friends that choose your uh, you know that takes decision for you and that that that's actually true because it is the peer pressure that we fall under uh that that was really an informative session thank you so much for joining in and thank you so much for sharing your thoughts sir so thank you for this opportunity and all the best to those who are listening to this video for their career thanks thank you very much